I don't have a shoe deal, so I'm looking forward to what shoes I'll be wearing in the near future. For now, I'll be wearing Nike. They've shown interest to have a shoe deal with me as well, so ties are not broken there. Karen, Mag Karen Maguire joins us now. He's a sports finance lecturer at the University of Liverpool in the UK. Kieran, great to have you on the show. Um, look, before we go on, full disclosure, I wear Uniqlo shirts, but I haven't had any email last time I checked from Uniqlo offering me a nine-figure uh, sponsorship deal. So I, I am a little miffed about this. But look, all joking aside, how much of a coup is this for fast retailing? Uh, especially considering that Federer is approaching the end of his career. I think from fast retailing's point of view, they see the benefits in, in terms of a 10-year deal is that there's a senior circuit in tennis. And uh, also, Roger Federer is pretty timeless. Um, he's, he's defied the odds time and time again in terms of winning tournaments. Um, and I'm sure that Fast and Uniqlo feel that he can continue to do so because there doesn't appear to be a lot of competition. So he's going to continue playing tennis for as long as he chooses. But I think from his point of view, he sees this as an opportunity to get involved in fashion. Um, he, he's the perfect advertising board for, for any brand because um, he's he's... He's innocent in the sense that there's never any trouble with him. He speaks a number of languages. He's intelligent. He's articulate. He's witty. Um, he, he's the perfect advertising hoarding. So from, from FAST's point of view, they can look to a market which they've previously not been particularly um, familiar with in terms of mo moving to a more senior market um, as, as he grows older. Um, and from, from his point of view, he has extended his brand uh, for far mm. longer than he would originally anticipated. Mm. Um, I'm curious. What sort of return on investment can fast retailing expect from Roger Federer? Uh, typically, what sort of return on, on investment do you get on sports advertising like this? Well, what, what, from, what Fast will try to do is to make him the, the face of the brand. I mean, as, as you mentioned earlier, they already have some ambassadors, but Djokovic, his, his career has, to a certain extent, fallen off a cliff. Therefore, from Uniqlo's point of view, they want somebody to be the, the face of their stores. Um, Federer still will have that for, um, you know, as, as for the next few years, at least. And then beyond that, I think he'll be associated with developing a brand of fashion, which is going beyond sort of the casual sportswear market. Um, from, from Fast's point of view, whilst, whilst the cost might seem expensive, um, if you compare that to how much Adidas are paying for premium football club, brand associations um, and tennis gets plenty of viewing figures and also it's a fairly universal sport then i think they'll probably see this as, as a quite a reasonable bargain right but but how does a company like that measure the actual return that it gets from that investment well, what, what they'll do is, is they'll look at their present level of sales and their anticipated sales um, and, and compare that to what they now perceive that they can do with uh, Roger Federer's The Face of Uniglo. Um, so, therefore, they will, they will have done their, they'll have crunched their numbers just as you would do for a, a, an M&A deal, in effect, because you are, you are buying a product, you are buying a brand. They'll have looked at the incremental income coming in from, from having him um, sort of selling their products compared to without him being there, um, the, the costs involved in, in terms of the that it's going to cost them, and, and, and they, they believe that there will be a, a marginal benefit to them. OK, I think we're going to have to leave it there. Kieran Maguire, sports finance lecturer at the University of Liverpool, thank you very much indeed for your time.